Hi, I'm Robert Osborne, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Earlier today, we started a month-long salute to the 90th anniversary of Columbia Pictures Studio. It's a festival we'll revisit every Tuesday throughout January with 24-hour marathons of films from Columbia. Now, technically, the studio's history began 96 years ago when the brothers Jack and Harry Cohn and their partner Joe Brandt formed the so-called CBC Film Sales Corporation, or as the trade press jokingly liked to say, CBC is in corned beef and cabbage. But six years later, in 1924, Joe Brandt sold his share of the company to Harry Cohn and the brothers renamed their company Columbia Pictures. So happy 90th anniversary, Columbia. And what a history that film company has had. The great films of Frank Capra were theirs, Rita Hayworth movies were theirs, later films like Born Yesterday, From Here to Eternity, Bridge on the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia, Funny Girl, I mean, all the way to movies like Zero Dark Thirty in 2012. But right now, we have one of Columbia's biggest triumphs from the 1950s. It's On the Waterfront from 1954, the winner for the Best Picture Academy Award that year. The film also took home Oscars for the performances of Marlon Brando and Eve Marie Saint and for Elia Kazan as Best Director. And it had not one or two, but three actors vying for the Best Supporting Actor Award that year. Lee J. Cobb, Carl Malden, and Rod Steiger. And if you're curious as to what other Best Picture nominees on their waterfront competed with that year, they were actually The Country Girl, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Three Coins of the Fountain, and another Columbia picture released in 1954, The Cane Mutiny. I mean, not bad for a company that used to be considered but a blimp on the Hollywood radar screen, a poverty row studio. Well, what you're about to see is a great film written by Bud Schulberg about corruption on the docks of Hoboken, New Jersey. Told like a Warner Brothers gangster movie of the 1930s, but later seen as a plea by Kazan and Schulberg for understanding as to why both of them leaked names and blew the whistle on several former friends during the infamous House Un-American Activities investigation that rocked Hollywood and the world in the early 1950s. But whether you see this as a political statement or as nothing more than a riveting drama, it is one of the greats among all the movies made in the 1950s. Here from 1954, On the Waterfront. <laughs> 